Hi, this is Mary Williams with MidState Solutions. In this tipcast, we will be demonstrating the use of thresholds in Oracle Primavera P6. Thresholds can be a useful technique to assist you in monitoring parameters such as start date variance or total float. You are able to specify a lower and or upper, upper threshold value for your selected parameter against which your project data will be evaluated. P6 will generate issues for any data elements that exceed your thresholds. You can then use issues as a vehicle for notifying project participants about the thresholds and then determining and documenting corrective actions. We will discuss issues in more detail in a future tipcast. For our example, we're going to monitor the activities in the Foundation WBS element for start date variance in days. This parameter will generate an issue if the difference between the activity's baseline start date and the activity's current start date fall outside of your threshold tolerances. A negative value for start date variance would denote that the current start date of the activity is later than the primary baseline start date. I've added columns to my layout to display the current start date and the baseline start date. We can see that most of the activities under the Foundation WBS element started late. So let's go and set up a threshold. If you look over on your directory bar, there's a button or a window that can be open entitled Thresholds. So I'll click on Thresholds. I've already set up a threshold called Start Date Variance in Days. You just need to come over to your command bar and click the Add button to add a new threshold. On the tabs at the bottom, let's start on the General tab. The first thing that you need to decide is, is which parameter you're going to monitor. And if you click on the Browse button, you'll see a list of uh, parameters that are displayed. I would strongly suggest that you access the Help information to see how these are calculated and for a definition of each one of these parameters. As again, I started with uh, Start Date Variance in Days. Next, I'm going to select my lower and or upper threshold values. I've selected a minus 3 for my lower threshold. So any activity that is 3 or more days late from its baseline start date will generate an issue. Conversely, any activities that start earlier by 2 or more days will generate an issue as well. Anything in between those values would be acceptable or tolerable. Next, I can decide which WBS element I would like to monitor. So if I click on my Browse button, I'll see all of my WBS elements on this project. And I wanted to specify the Foundation WBS element. Uh, that's the only one I'm wanting to monitor at the time for this time. Next, I can select the level of detail to monitor. It's either at the WBS or the activity level. And I selected the activity level. I can also assign a responsible manager to this threshold. And that would basically be the person uh, who's responsible for uh, resolving any problems associated with this threshold. Over to the right, I can uh, assign a status of enabled or disabled. So if I'm wanting to monitor this threshold, I would want to be sure I assign the status of enabled. And when I want to discontinue monitoring this threshold, I can uh, change the status to disabled. If the threshold generates an issue, I can select what the priority of that issue would be. And I'm going to select top priority for this, for any issues generated from this threshold. Let's go to the Details tab. On the Details tab, you can select a from and a to date in the Monitor Time window area. And what this will do, it will uh, monitor activities in WBS elements whose start dates exceed the to date or whose finish dates precede the from date. So those activities will be excluded from the threshold monitor and therefore no issues will be generated. When it gets time to actually monitor the threshold, there's two things that I can do. If I just want to select one threshold to monitor, I can just highlight it and come over to my command bar on the right and select Monitor. I can also go up to Tools and select Monitor Thresholds. And this would enable me to monitor all thresholds at once. 
For start and finish date thresholds, it's best to monitor the threshold after applying actuals but before scheduling. This will prevent numerous issues from being generated when one, only one activity causes the problem. If I schedule prior to monitoring the threshold, it would cause all successor activities to be included in the monitor that really are not an issue. Nevertheless, when I come in to monitor thresholds, I can decide whether I want to use the dates in the original threshold monitor window or select new dates. So I can choose one of those options and then click monitor and it would monitor all of my selected issues. But I'm just going to select monitor over here on the command bar and I'll answer yes to the confirmation dialog box and then you'll see I get a notification that eight new issues were generated for the selected threshold which was start date variance. So I'll click OK and I can see those issues in my issues window or I can come over to the actual window on the command bar and view and, uh, the issues in the issue window. And this is actually where I would proceed to notify other project team participants and to uh, hopefully adopt a resolution to any problems. If I, I'm going to click back on the thresholds window. When I decide to discontinue uh, monitoring an issue, again, I can just change the status to disabled or I can come over and click the delete button and when I delete an issue, all of, uh, delete a threshold, all of its issues go away as well. I'm going to go back to my activities window and just uh, recap one more thing here. Again, it's best after you status your schedule to run uh, apply actuals and that will then display the variance or calculate the variance just for the problematic activity versus generating issues for all of the uh, successors to the problem activity. So if I apply actuals, it will only select the problem activity versus all of the other activities. And, and that's why it's important to apply actuals before you actually reforecast the schedule. The next tip cast we are going to cover will actually uh, cover project issues and how you can use issues to hopefully resolve any problems uncovered on your project. Thank you for watching this tip cast. Hope you found it useful.